Hey there, today I will teach you the travel rules for bringing medicine through airport security in 2024. These tips and tricks will help you pack medicine the right way, especially if you are flying to another country with prescription medication. The Transportation Security Administration officers are so much more aware in 2024 about the medication that passengers must pack in their carry-on bags for their flight. They know the medical devices cannot be removed. They know more about disabilities and medical conditions that are invisible as well. If you are bringing medicine into a foreign country, research their rules. Google bring medicine into Tokyo, Japan, for example. Sudafed is illegal to be packed in bags for Mexico or Japan as well. The problem most passengers have when packing their medicine is they do not know where to pack it or if they need to bring it out in airport security or if they need the prescription attached. Um, so many questions that a lot of my viewers have. I hope to answer these questions in today's travel tip video. Here's what you can do throughout this video. You're going to decide, ask yourself the question when you're packing this medicine, Am I packing in my carry-on bag a prescription medicine or an over-the-counter medicine? That's going to help you distinguish between the rules for airport security in 2024. The most important travel tip for packing medicine is do not pack it in checked luggage. If you are packing medicine in a carry-on suitcase, remember that a lot of airplanes they are running out of overhead bin space for suitcases. So your must have travel essential medication needs to be packed in your tote bag or your personal item bag that will fit in under the airplane seat in front of you, okay? Now I'm going to teach you about packing prescription medicine in carry-on bags. The airlines do not care where your medicine is packed. However, for airport security, they are the ones screening medication because their job is to protect people and crew members from dangerous items. When you're packing prescription medicine in carry-on bags for a flight, you can pack prescription pills anywhere. Pills do not need extra screening in airport security. If you are packing for an international flight, those prescriptions need to be on the bottles. And you're going to assume that when you land in another country, your prescription pills are going to have to be screened going through the conveyor belt in their airport security. One travel hack for any passenger taking medication in any carry-on suitcase to any country is this. You're going to pack all of your medicine bottles in a gallon baggie or a makeup pouch or a travel case of some sort. And then if they need to be screened at any time, or if you need to move your medicine to a, your personal item bag for the flight because they've had to check your carry-on suitcase, you just pull that little bag with all of your medicine in one container that's less stressful, it's easily accessible, and you just plop it down in your personal item bag. That's going to save you time and it's going to be less stressful because you know where all that medicine is and you can take it out quickly. One travel tip for packing medicine for other countries, either a pill form or liquid form, is to know that the prescription has to be attached to the bottle, not the box. It needs to be attached to the bottle of the pills or the liquid medicine. And here are some tips for having that prescription for only the amount of pills or liquid medicine that you need to pack. Ask your pharmacy if they can create a blister pack or a Plasti like Sudafed comes in where it's that foil lined sheet, which would be lightweight and flat to pack with the prescription sticker on it. And I would just pack the amount of pills that you need for that trip, plus a few more in case your flights are canceled. For liquid prescription medication, you're going to make sure that the prescription is on that bottle and you're going to pack that liquid medication with a prescription in a separate bag. It can be a sandwich bag like I've used for my shampoo that's prescription and a large container, or you can pack it in a gallon bag, a trash bag from your grocery store even. When you are in the airport security in another country, you're going to pull out your liquids bag and then you're also going to pull out your bag of your liquid medicine. When I packed my prescription shampoo for my trip to Belgium, 
in their airport security, I packed that sandwich bag of my shampoo separately from my bag of liquids and I put both of them in the bins because they have to be screened separately because they're liquids from my carry-on suitcase. In the United States, when packing over-the-counter pills, you can pack them anywhere and in any type of container. They do not have to be screened separately from your carry-on suitcase. So keep them packed in there or in your personal item bag in case your carry-on suitcase gets checked last minute. Here are two ways that I have packed pills. I take a pill organizer and I will just put my Tylenol and Zyrtec maybe um, in a container like this enough for the entire trip. You can pack the pill organizer like this, but you can notice how much space that it does take up in your bag. And one hack is to separate each day's worth of pills because it's easier to find a little pocket of space for this item versus one solid pill organizer case. I've also just packed a few Advil and a couple of Tylenol in a sandwich bag for my trip. Passengers also need to pack over-the-counter liquid and medicine that is in liquid form and over-the-counter is allowed through airport security in bottles that are bigger than 3.4 ounces, the normal rule for taking liquids through carry-on suitcase travel. The Transportation Security Administration has made this rule years ago that any liquid item has to be in a container that's 3.4 ounces or smaller. Like you cannot pack a bottle of shampoo even if there's only one ounce of shampoo in it. However, a lot of passengers travel with over-the-counter liquids that are medicine. They're for your medical issues. For instance, um, contact solution. Another example of a liquid that can be in a larger bottle that's over the counter is cough syrup, Robitussin. You do not need a prescription for those because they're over the counter. And the other tip is that they can be in bottles that are larger than 3.4 ounces. And why? Because they are for medicinal use. Because that liquid is in a larger bottle, it needs to be separate from your bag of liquids, right? For airport security screening. Then you can put them all in one bag again and keep them in your personal item bag. One question that you can ask yourself about liquid medicine is, is it a liquid? Yes. If it is a liquid, then you ask yourself this question. Is the liquid for medicinal use? If yes, then it needs to be in a separate bag or by itself. It's just easier and quicker to pack it in a little sandwich bag or gallon baggie for airport security screening. If you're packing a bunch of disposable contacts and they're in those little containers that are for daily use and they have liquid in them, since they're for medicinal use, you do not have to pack them in your liquids bag that's quart sized in zips. I pack my little individual vials of eye drops and they're really tiny and flat to pack and I only need like two or three for a flight or a trip. So I just pack those in my regular liquids bag. If you go to the tsa.gov website and then scroll down to medical conditions or disabilities, you will see a lot of options that you can choose from. You can go there right now while you're listening to this video of some tips and tricks. For every condition, the first thing it says is to inform the officer. So you're going to tell the officer, I have a contact solution in here. Do you want me to put it in the bins? They may say no in the United States because the a lot of the airports in the United States have newer technology and that's why most passengers do not have to bring out their liquids bag. However, one tip is remember that the liquids rule still is in effect. Even if they do not make you take out the bag, the containers for regular liquids have to be 3.4 ounces or smaller. You can pack as many as you want to in there that will fit and it can zip. So if I'm an airline passenger trying to take contact solution or cough syrup, the rule is that I'm going to inform the officer and I'm going to have that liquid 
that is for medicinal use separate from my liquids bag for screening. Then I can put them together. If you're packing Ozempic, let's just assume that it needs to be screened because it's not on the TSA website under uh, liquid medications. We're going to treat it as a liquid medication and we're gonna have it in a bag separate from our liquids bag because I don't want to put the Ozempic in the gray bin for it. It's a dirty gray bin. They do not get cleaned every time or two. It just makes it faster and easier for you as a passenger and less stressful. Here is the best travel hack for passengers who are taking medicine in their carry-on bags through airport security. You can now go to Ask TSA on Facebook Messenger or Twitter. It's not um, TSA, it needs to be Ask TSA. And now they have an AI kind of automatic robot response and you have to choose which medical condition you want an answer to. There's also a way that you can call the TSA line as well. I'll have that for you in the first comment with all the other links. Because some TSA officers do not know all of the rules or they have not been updated, my tip is to get that response or that answer to your medication question in writing. I'm going to take a screenshot of that answer and have it in my photos section so that if the officer says, I'm sorry, you can't take Ozempic, which they're never going to say that, but if there is a problem, you can ask to speak to a supervisor and then show them the screenshot answer. It doesn't mean that that is going to be the final say. The officers have the final say, but you have done your research and you have proof and that is going to help you as the passenger. But you, 99.9% .9 of the time, will not have a problem with this at all. Now let's talk about liquid medication that is prescription. Like my prescription shampoo, that container or that bottle is larger than 3.4 ounces. And since it is for medicinal use with a prescription on it, I can take it through airport security in my carry-on bags, but it has to be screened separately. And because it is a prescription, it must have a prescription label on the bottle, right? So let me tell you a story. One of Chris's, uh, my husband, who is an airline pilot, one of his friends, who's also an airline pilot, he got his prescription um, eye drops taken away in London Heathrow. Why were his eye drops confiscated in airport security? One reason is he had a larger container of his prescri prescription eye drops in his liquids bag. They need to be separate, remember, because the container is larger than 3.4 ounces. And then he also got them confiscated. Probably the main reason is the prescription was not on that bottle. So they will take it away. This may sound very stressful and a lot to remember. My tip is to just ask your pharmacist for that prescription label like I talked about earlier to help yourself. And remember, you're doing all of this before you even get to the airport. So once you start that vacation, you will be less stressed because you stressed less by taking care of this and researching it before your trip. Here are some rules for packing drugs. Marijuana is allowed in airport security. If it is in a larger than is legal amount and they happen to find it, they are required to report you to the nearest authorities there in the airport. But their screening machine is not looking for marijuana. It's not dangerous to passengers and crew members, but if it's packed in a weird item and they happen to find it, then they have to report you. Here's how you find out if marijuana is allowed in airport security. Once you go to the tsa.gov website, you can go to it right now, in the top right corner is what can I bring. You're going to type in marijuana or type in insulin, for example. And then it's going to tell you if it is allowed in carry-on bags and if it is allowed in checked luggage. And then for marijuana, it's going to tell you the amount. And that 0.3% is also if you are taking it in liquid form. If it is a liquid, it has to be in your liquids bag, okay? If it is for medicinal use, and the container is larger than 3.4 ounces, it must have a prescription in it and it must be packed in another bag or by itself 
in the gray bins for security screening in the conveyor belt. The TSA website says that insulin does need to be put in the gray bins, but first it says to inform the officer. So if you have diabetes, say I am packing insulin and it's in my blank. If you need it, you're going to have it in your personal item bag, but it tells you to inform the officer and be prepared to put it in the bins for screening. Most of them are not going to make you in the United States. You can also pack the blood sugar test kit, okay? But it says inform the officer, I have some diabetic equipment in my blank, in my personal item bag. Do you need me to pull it out? It's your approach as well. So you're saying hello, you're saying I, you're informing the officer, and then you're asking them, do you need me to pull it out? Do not be in a hurry. You're never going to see those passengers behind you again. This is your vacation. And just so you know, if the alarm goes off, it doesn't mean you're in trouble. It just means they may need to screen it separately or again. If you followed my travel packing tips, you may have put your insulin or something inside a shoe. Well, if the security screening machine cannot see through that shoe, then it's going to take time for the officers to pull you out of line, delaying that line, and another officer has to be removed to go search your bag. So for that reason, that is why they want passengers to take out their medicine. If you're wearing a glucose monitor or some kind of a pump or any medical device, it will not be taken off of your body or need to be taken out or something like that. But if it flags an alarm, then they may need to tap it. They'll tap that device maybe, and then they may swab your hands for explosives for some reason. You can also pack ice packs that are in solid form for items that are not medicinal for use, or if you need ice packs on the third day or for your return trip, and that ice pack is uh, at room temperature. So it's the gel ice pack that's all mushy now. It is allowed through airport security in that condition. For medicinal uses, ice packs do not have to be frozen for carry-on bags. If I wanna keep my bag of snacks like grapes cold, I can't just put a mushy ice pack that's halfway frozen in my bags for carry-on travel. It must be solid because those grapes are not for medicinal use. So if you are taking prescription medicine into a foreign country, you're going to make sure that prescription is on that item. If it makes the alarm go off, that's okay because you've already researched that country's rules for prescription medication, for over-the-counter medication, and you know what is allowed for you to take. You also have helped yourself because you packed those medicines in a separate baggie so that they all can be taken out if they need to be taken out quickly, and then they all can be put back in your bag after security screening if they needed to be screened extra. And then you're going to enjoy this bucket list vacation of a lifetime because you've stressed less and you know the rules for taking medicine into another country or into another state here in the great United States of America. Thanks for your time. I hope these tips help.